What is the best top tier aircraft in War Thunder? Well, a lot of you might have said the MiG-21 bits. It turns decently well, it accelerates and climbs like a bat out of hell, it's got four R60s which pull pretty hard, they just have a tendency to dive after flares like there's no tomorrow, plus two R3Rs which are hilarious to use in head-ons against players new to top tier jets. Some of you might have said the F4E, it's got four M9Js which are extremely good and don't need to go after flares so much. You've got four AIM-7Es, which are very good. You've got that Vulcan cannon, much better than the Russian 23mm, and the Agile Eagle upgrade, which actually lets you dogfight some aircraft. The F5E is one of the best dogfighting jets in the entire game. It's got flares and chaff, it's incredibly nimble, very high turn rate and energy retention, and a high initial pull. If you're me, the Phantom FGR will be up there. Its pulse Doppler radar makes its sparrows amazingly effective, so much so that I don't even use the 20mm gun pod on it anymore since most of my kills are with the sparrows. The AIM-9Gs are fantastic when you need them, and that low altitude engine performance is nuts. I really, really love this thing. But that might all be going away with the next update direct hit, where Sweden will have possibly the best top tier fighter in the game, the 1979 JA-37 Vigan. This video is brought to you by our sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Whether you're leaking classified documents to get pixel tanks buffed, uh, trying to keep your browser from getting bogged down by spam, or just trying to stream your favourite movies and TV shows, or let's say you want to watch a particular military tech video that's been blocked in your country. Well, the troops need a VPN, and the one I use every day in fact is Softshark. With just a couple of clicks I can bypass region locks and watch movies and series and access videos and websites blocked in any country, along with being alerted if my information is ever found on untrustworthy websites. It's simple, fast, reliable, safe, and one of the top rated VPN providers in the world. Head to the link in the description below and use the code KOALA, and not only will you get a whopping 83% off your first month, but an additional three months absolutely free. That's four months of complete online security, for less than the price of a cup of coffee. If you're nay happy or don't you think it's for you, there's no muss, no fuss, because Surfshark gives you a 30 day money back guarantee as well. So I highly recommend trying them out, I'm super happy with them. So thank you to them for supporting this channel, and now on with the video. So this will be our most modern new aircraft in War Thunder, not an upgrade variant or a modernization like the J7E or the AV-8C, this is a new airframe that entered service after the F-16 did. Kind of puts into perspective how far ahead of the curve America was for aircraft in this era. The Vigan is a third generation multi-role platform developed in the 1960s to supplement and replace existing aircraft like the A-32 Lansen and J-35 Draken. While the attack variant AJ-37 entered service first in the early 70s, the fighter interceptor variant which we are getting had upgraded hardware and avionics and began to be adopted from 1979. It would go on to serve until 2005 when the modernised JA-37D model was succeeded by the JAS-39 Gripen. Basically, this aircraft served as the frontline fighter, interceptor, ground strike, reconnaissance and naval strike platform of the Swedish Air Force, and besides the Mirage F1, which it is definitely superior to, French mains don't at me, was one of the latest serving third gen aircraft outside China at least with the nation that developed it. Now that means that there are several more variants that could be added to the game in future, at least three more, with later missiles, avionics and ordnance. Or in other words, Swedish pilots should get used to this aircraft, as it's pretty much going to be your mainstay from here on out. The Vigan is a somewhat unique design of aircraft we haven't seen before, with a huge double delta wing and big beefy canards, very different from the Mirage or Draken. It's got a single turbofan engine with a very powerful afterburner, some 28,000 pounds of thrust, which means, side note, a crazy amount of fuel consumption. A 20 minute fuel load in this thing will be gone in under 4 minutes on full burner. You've got a single 30mm cannon with some interesting ballistics. It's a heavy ass round so it has a ton of initial velocity but also a ton of drop. And one thing you don't have is flares. That's right, the Vigan didn't receive flare dispensers until 1987, the same year it received A9Ls 
and chaff pods even later in the mid-1990s. That was on the J37D variant. Since flares were available before this variant was upgraded to J37C or D standard though, a lot of players have been asking for them to be added, which I personally can understand, especially with the F5C receiving flares it never had. And given that the MiG-21 MF and SMT, possibly the F8C and the Jaguar A will receive flares with this update, the Viggen will definitely stand out for not having them. Now on the dev server at least the Viggen did turn exceptionally well, not quite as well as a Draken, but it kind of felt like a MiG-21 MF with more thrust. It does lose a fair amount of energy as you'd expect from such an enormous wing area, and on the dev server at least it didn't accelerate particularly well, although it was missing some 15% thrust, so keep in mind it will likely be improved. The important thing however is of course your suspended weaponry, and the Viggen is going to be bringing what will at this stage be the best missile in the game, that being the new RB-71 Skyflash. This is a British designed upgrade of the AIM-7E2 Sparrow, which is a missile I hope to see, and Skyflash was also the signature weapon of the RAF Phantoms, and has been confirmed that it will come to them too. Now compared to our current AIM-7Es, Skyflash is a huge improvement. It tracks straight off the rails rather than having that 2 second dead zone which results in so many sparrows failing to pick up their targets. It burns for twice as long as the AIM-7E meaning it doesn't care as much about launch speed and will retain speed better. And it pulls twice as many Gs, that's right 30 G overload on a sparrow. This coupled with the fantastic radar of the Viggen will make it an incredibly effective weapon. This is the kind of missile you will really struggle to dodge and instead will have to know how to counter it if you want to evade. That means putting it into the situation where it never even threatens you in the first place rather than just waiting for it to come close and trying to outpull it. Now that means understanding cranking maneuvers, abort ranges and Doppler notching, which we will be doing a video specifically about after I've enjoyed beating the shit out of you all for a few days. I mean, after I've gotten used to Skyflash and kind of locked down the right speeds and ranges to teach people. <clears throat> the thing is that on the dev server and people were reporting, oh my god, the Skyflash is amazing, look how hard it's pulling, no missile can do that. Uh, yeah, it can, because on the dev server, Skyflash was given the same G limit as the AIM-7E, literally limited to the exact same pull. Now it is a lighter missile and having burned for longer and begun tracking immediately, it was slightly more effective than the AIM-7E, but that was only with a 15G pull. So just imagining twice that with the Viggen's radar, yeah, this thing is going to be insane. Uh, that's something else that was missing on the first dev server, as the Viggen had a copy-paste radar from the F4E. In reality, the Viggen had a much more capable pulse Doppler radar that would put even the one on the British Phantoms to shame. This thing had full look-down, shoot-down capability, as did the Skyflash missile, so the J37 could pretty much engage targets at beyond visual range, regardless of altitude. If it can see you, it can hit you. Now this radar was also capable of a TWS mode, which stands for Track While Scan, and basically means that a target would be quote unquote locked or tracked, but without the target's radar warning receiver actually registering a lock, it'd seem as if they were just being scanned. The Viggen would also be able to track a target while continuing to scan for others, which would be incredibly useful for selecting a target, tracking them, but still retaining the situational awareness and knowing the positions of other enemies if they become a higher priority. You don't lose your view of the rest of your radar contacts by tracking a single bandit. Now unlike say the F-14 or F-15, the Viggen's radar in TWS mode couldn't actually guide missiles like Skyflash, and because of that I'm doubtful that Gaijin will actually model it, but it's still something to keep in mind and it would be really really cool to see. Might require a couple more keybinds though and are starting to run out of them. Besides the two sky flashes, you also get four RB24J or AIM-9P3 Sidewinder missiles shared by the Draken, and now you can sacrifice the sky flash to get six Sidewinders, but given that you don't have countermeasures or an insane amount of acceleration, I think the Draken will actually out-accelerate this thing. I wouldn't recommend this, as it basically requires you to get into a situation you may struggle to get out of. What I would suggest doing, and what I'm definitely going to try out as a primary tactic when I first get my hands on the aircraft, is taking out a relatively low amount of fuel, say 20 minutes, and going for two long-range Skyflash kills first, 
before attempting to make a landing. See, the Viggen has a funky little party trick, that being reverse thrust. It actually directs the thrust forward out of slits in the engine nozzle in order to cut down on landing length and be able to land on roadways. This was something Sweden prioritized heavily, kind of focusing on like if the Soviets invaded, airfields would be their first priority target. What this means is that the Viggen can go from Mark 1 at 3000 feet to fully stopped on the runway in as little as 40 seconds. And given that you have SAM protection, although you shouldn't, given how RRB works right now, that system is really abusable. Uh, you can take off, get two sky flashes off, land super quickly, reload your missiles, and get back up again before the game is looking like a win or a loss. That means you've got potentially two kills while still having a full tank of fuel, make sure to swap out for at least 30 minutes when you respawn, and a full load of missiles, including more sky flashes when you get back into the fight. Now as players begin to learn how to counter missiles like sky flash, that tactic probably won't work as well. But to begin with, not a lot of people really understand what to do against Fox 1 missiles besides just prey so it might be a really effective strategy. It'll keep you out of the initial furball and offset, first of all, the high fuel consumption, secondly, the lack of flares, and thirdly, the fact that you only have six missiles while the Phantoms, for example, have eight. God, the FGR's gonna have four sky flash. That's... <laughs> I'm so excited for this update. One thing the Viggen can't do very well compared to other top tier fighters is ground attack. And this kind of annoys me that Sweden still aren't getting anything for ground pounding at top tier. You've already got no helicopters and the A-32 Lansen is yeah, pretty crap, let's be honest. Really the best option is the Saab 105s with their bullpup slash Nord equivalents. And these are slow, lightweight aircraft without some of the later avionics and completely useless for air-to-air -air against something like a MiG-21. I was hoping for an attack variant of the Draken, such as the Danish F-35, which carried four bullpups, along with a later variant of the Draken, like the J-35J, with more thrust and six missiles, as the top-tier fighter. But now that the J-37 is officially here, the AJ-37, the initial attack variant which did carry Mavericks, is definitely a possibility. I doubt it'll be here this update though, and the J-37 variant carries a very limited attack ordnance, basically being relegated to a Swedish Zuni rocket equivalent. The Saab 105 is still going to be my top ground striker for Sweden, and uh, I wish that wasn't the case. So one of the most interesting questions the Viggen asks is, what comes next? I mean, like I said in the beginning, the FGR-2 is already a really nice aircraft to use if you understand how to use missiles properly and how to defend against fighters trying to force a close-in fight. Now, it's going to be getting four Skyflash missiles. The F-4EJ Kai has been confirmed to be coming, although there's no dev blog at this stage and it wasn't on the first dev server. But that thing, I'm not sure what Sparrow variant it carried, but it does have a pulse Doppler radar from the F-16 which also has a TWS mode. Then there's the Mirage F1, which is France's comparator to the Viggen. Later variants of the MiG-23 with later missiles like R-24, which are somewhat akin to Skyflash. And then of course, there's the US Navy's F4J Phantom, which will ideally carry AIM-7F, again, comparable to the new missiles. Now that's a lot that could come very easily, hopefully with the new battle rating ceilings to ease the BR compression and not ruin the matchmaker for jets like the Lightning or Mirage 3. The interesting thing is though that these jets can also sort of begin our forays into all aspect IR missiles, and with Skyflash plus the Viggen's radar, that's not even such a massively dangerous prospect anymore. See, Skyflash is basically an R60M with beyond visual range capability. It can lock you from any angle, pulls 30 Gs, and given the capabilities of Doppler radars, locking is no issue for the aircraft using these kinds of missiles. And they can be fueled by flares. That means that, for example, the R60M or the AIM-9P5 really aren't far out of reach for, well, right now. And we have plenty of aircraft to put these missiles on. The F-5E, the MiG-21 Bess, later versions of the MiG-23 or Su-17. The Mirage F-1 carried Magic 2s, again comparable to an AIM-9P5. These are all doable, so long as battle ratings are spaced out and they don't get down tiered too far. We haven't stepped into AIM-9Ls yet, those are a step up again, 
but the F-104S carried AIM-9Ls and a spades, which are, guess what? Skyflash, same missile again. Now since the F-104 is such a sluggish and just generally less capable airframe, its being among the first aircraft with AIM-9Ls would be fine. This is what I believe will be our next generation, our next level of aircraft, and I think it's likely to start coming this year. It's not overly difficult to see that. And that, that just gets us ready for the 4th gen fighters, the F-14, MiG-29, Mirage 2000, Tornado if Gaijin can get the licensing rights, apparently BAE are a pain to work with on that front. Basically, the Vigan is the pivotal aircraft here, and while I think it will be one of, if not the best jet fighters in War Thunder in the direct hit patch, I don't think it will retain its top dog status for very long. Anyways, that is all for today's video, I hope you have enjoyed and that you're as excited for this update as I am. I know modern jets can be a wee bit of a sore subject for some of you, either because you're not at top tier and don't get to enjoy all these new levels of content, or because you don't like so called missile thunder, but I personally love it and I cannot wait to see where Gaijin go with it from here. Make sure to let me know your own thoughts on both this aircraft and this video, and until next time, thanks for watching, and I will catch you lads in the skies. This guy's playing the fucking long game. Ugh.